Good evening, everyone. Hey, thanks for checking us out here. Getting ready for baseball season is 2021. It's kind of a virtual question and answer thing, but boy, I'll tell you what, we got a lot of great stuff to get through. I mean, the weather was fantastic today, up around 50 degrees. How cool was that? It felt like baseball weather, like we're getting that turn of the corner and going into baseball season. Not only that, you got spring training going on right now. A lot of talk out of the Detroit camp with all the young pitchers going. Spencer Torkelson, their first round pick from last year, hitting bomb after bomb every day and in batting practice. So there's been a lot of buzz here the last couple of days as we get ready for baseball season. Really cool thing that we got a schedule for the Mud Hens and a lot of changes that we need to talk about. So we certainly thank you for checking us out here on Facebook Live tonight. And you know, we're going to get through some uh, things here. We're going to go through some of this stuff that, you know, questions that you're going to have talking about this baseball season that is rapidly approaching us. As you know, we're not far off from the start of this season that is coming up in early April. We're going to have a fun night. We're going to chat some stuff. We're going to be serious. We're going to have some fun as well as we get ready for this baseball season. Let's bring in the guys that will be joining me at, to discuss all of this. Let's start with Vice President and General Manager of the Toledo Mud Hens, Eric Ibsen. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Matt. Happy to be here. We're excited to, to share a lot of information tonight. Yeah, it is. It is cool to be talking about baseball. I think that's the biggest thing right now is the fact that we're going to get to chat about baseball. That's the cool thing. All right. Also joining us will be the director of ticket sales, Kyle Mall. He'll come in to handle some of these ticket questions that we know a lot of people are going to have. Kyle, thank you. Thanks, Matt. Excited to talk to everybody. Yeah, looking forward to it as well. And uh, Mike Keedy, the Director of Strategic Planning and Projects, will join us as well because there's going to be a lot of questions. Mike, you're you're ready for those that we know we're going to field uh, talking about things that are going to happen here at Fifth Third Field this year. Look forward to it. Thanks, Matt. All right, Eric, let's start with you. And, and I think the thing that we want to start about is this date that we're looking at of the start of baseball, which is going to be great, but it's hard to believe it's been 582 days since the last time we had Toledo Mud Hens baseball. It's crazy. Matt, when, when you mention that number, it, it really, really describes uh, what everybody is, has had to endure for a long period of time. Uh, September of 2019 was the last Mud Hens baseball game. And we, we are so excited to start being able to talk about moving forward and the future and a season and baseball and fans in fifth third field and uh we, we can't wait i mean really we realize as an organization we've been quiet quite a bit over the last year and and you know there's there's many reasons for that um you know waiting on information uh but i i will tell you the the support the patience the understanding that our sponsors, season ticket holders, uh, anyone associated with the organization has had when, when we're able to start getting this information out really describes why Toledo is the best minor, best minor league market in all of sports. Um, you know, it's, it's for almost a year, which is hard to believe, we've had more questions than answers uh, about everything related to our industry. Uh, and, and obviously, not just us, but what everybody has had to go through in their lives and their situations and, and, and you know, hoping that as people are healthy. Um, it, it's, it's been a challenging year for everybody, no matter what your industry is, no matter what you do for a living, no matter what your interests are, whether it's sports and mud hens baseball or anything else. And the good thing is we're, we're making progress. There, there's still a lot of questions. We have more answers than we did a day ago, a week ago, a month ago, but we're, we're still navigating quite a bit as we, on a real quick turnaround, as anyone who follow us knows, to announce the season when we did, and know that's only about six, at the time, eight weeks away, when normally we have the schedule a year in advance, and uh, are, are working on these things throughout the fall, and, and all those months that we have to prepare. Uh, we, we got a lot to figure out, but we, you know, it's, the minor league sports industry, whether you're talking about the mud hens, the walleye, anything is, you know, the last year has been devastating to our industry for many reasons. 
Uh, we're an event driven business and we have not been able to have events. So we're ready to get back to it, pick ourselves up off the mat a little bit. And it's, it's going to take us a little while to get back to some sort of normal. It's going to take us a little while to um, understand everything that we're dealing with. But the exciting piece is that we have the go ahead to go and we're moving full steam ahead for that. And uh, we will share as much information as we can as we're getting it in real time. And uh, we're just happy that, that you know, I, I, in many of the conversations I've had with people over the last couple of weeks, we've been quiet for a long time, but now the, the fire drills and the constant messaging from us is going to happen. And we're thrilled to be at this point finally. Yeah, it's exciting. And there's there's a lot of changes too uh, going into this year. It's It's kind of crazy that we're having this kind of a change going into this coming off of a year where we didn't even have baseball, but there is, there's a new agreement in place with the minor leagues and major league baseball here. There is. So, you know, we could probably keep everybody here till about midnight for me to, to truly describe what this new relationship with major league baseball looks like. We're, we're absorbing it ourselves. Um, but I, I, you know, I'd be happy to, to give an overview. So basically the, the, the structure that was in place had all 160 affiliated minor league teams reporting to one governing body that was called the National Association. And they, they represented the minor leagues as a whole in any discussions or negotiations with Major League Baseball. And what, you know, the, the diehards who follow baseball probably have a pretty good pulse on this. Uh, but on top of the pandemic and there being no season last year, that contract between the National Association of Major League Baseball ran out in the fall. Um, so in addition to trying to figure out how we're going to react to the pandemic and the, the impact it's had on our industry uh, through the fall and many discussions, a, a new structure has, has been developed that as of February 10th, we're officially a part of. And what that means is that we have a personal or a professional development license with Major League Baseball. Uh, the contract we sign is with Major League Baseball directly, uh, and there's more of a direct relationship between the now 120 affiliated teams and Major League Baseball. And I think in the long term, uh, it, it's going to be great for, for us and the minor leagues. Um, the short term, we're just trying to understand it, really, and, and just on a quick turnaround with like I said, coming out of the pandemic, there's there's lots of things to figure out. And, you know, we could get into the nitty gritty, whether you're talking about uh, travel and how that's impacted by the pandemic and this new uh, relationship with Major League Baseball, some of the division alignments and things that we're going to talk about. So there's a lot of fun, exciting new stuff. It's also coming at a time of, of quick turnarounds and change and everything that all minor league and major league teams are having to deal with with uh, what happened with the pandemic in 2020 and, and how we're trying to get restarted here in 2021. Well, and certainly there there is a lot. You brought up a great one in travel. We're not going to get into that here, but we can get into the fact that uh, we've got a new look to a minor league baseball as far as divisions and as far as the league is concerned. And and let's talk about that because the Mudhens will be part of the AAA East they're going in the Midwest division, which means we're going to see some new teams like Omaha, Nebraska, and Des Moines, Iowa, the Iowa Cubs, and the St. Paul Saints out of Minnesota. Yeah, it, it, you know, this is one of the, the one of the benefits to this new relationship that uh, through the goals of Major League Baseball, wanting to streamline things like travel and realignment and, and not having a AAA affiliate, uh, you know, we, we've always been real fortunate. We've, we've got a excellent long-standing relationship with the Tigers. We're 50 minutes away and we can get a guy up there in time for a game if one of their guys gets hurt during batting practice. Well, there's been other cases where you have the Washington Nationals AAA affiliate in Fresno, California, and, and you can imagine the logistical problems that are caused by a situation like that. So Major League Baseball wanted to streamline things, reorganize things a little bit, uh, Propose a model where those some of those things can improve, along with a long list of facility standards and other things that we're 
we're currently absorbing right now. But this this for the fans is is an excellent one. They're going to see some teams and organizations uh, that that we haven't seen before, and you know that that's that's a, a great benefit. And this year's schedule is going to be a little bit different. Obviously, when you look at the schedule and you see the six game series. You know, that, that's a byproduct of still dealing with the COVID situation and trying to cut down on travel. And instead of when the Mud Hens go on a six-game road trip, having to travel within that trip, Major League Baseball wanted to take the approach where for this year only, we just do longer series, six games against teams to cut down on that travel. And, you know, you'll, you'll see a little bit more of a, uh, a regular schedule that, that people are accustomed to next year in 2022. But this was the the best way to get things going with keeping player safety in mind. And, and so here we go. And, it, you know, just having the new affiliates will be a fresh look for us to see new teams coming into the, the third field. And you just saw that graphic there. We're going to open up with one of those new teams right away at fifth third field on April the 6th with Omaha and the storm chasers coming in. Yes. And, and, you know, you know, there, there, there there's things and, you know, uh, working on things like the travel, uh, there's a laundry list of things we have to do to be ready, but to to get new teams to come in and, and see that and be able to go to new markets. And, and now that we're going from a 14 team league to a 20 team league, um, it, it, it'll, it'll be fun and different. And uh, you'll get to see a lot of different prospects and players that, that we just wouldn't have had access to before. And some of these teams that really, if they ever did come to Toledo, it was years and years ago as a part of past leagues and organizations and, um, you know, this this is going to be a lot of fun to do this. And I think, uh, well, Ken asks a great question here, and I'm going to fire it in right at this point, uh, Eric, because it does tie into what we're just talking about. And that is, will the divisions that the Hens play rotate on a yearly basis? You know, that, that's an excellent question, and I'm not sure we're quite there yet. What, how I would describe it based upon what I know right now is, once again, when you, you factor in the, the pandemic situation, we're playing a smaller number of teams. You know, usually we play all other 13 teams in the International League. Right. I can't imagine we're going to necessarily play all 19 teams every year moving forward. So there probably will be some sort of rotation where you're getting the South Division or the North Division in addition to who you're playing the most. Um, but we really haven't talked about, there's been such a, uh, 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 I want to say rush, but a quick timeline to get everything for this year set. There's just been some real topical conversations about 2022 and what that schedule looks like moving forward. But I am confident saying it won't look like it does this year with either the six game series or only the six or seven or eight teams that we're playing. That, that's 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 going to spread out quite a bit more. All right. Let's uh, let's quickly jump into the coaching staff here. Eric, uh, you know, and and we're, we're going to see Tom Prince, uh, who was scheduled to be the manager last year. He was here in Toledo with the alternative site, uh, but the the fact that we're actually going to get to see him manage games this year. We're excited. I, I, we were so thrilled that Tom and his experience uh, was going to be here last year. We're, we're fortunate that due to everything that's happened, he's still going to be here. Got to talk to him a little bit during the the Tigers taxi squad last year, although we weren't allowed anywhere near him. Um, so, you know, we're excited. This coaching staff with Hess coming back uh, and, and the coaching staff we have with Doug and CJ being new to the staff and, and getting to know them a little bit in the near future, I, I think we're well positioned for success along with, you know, a, a strong team that we're we're hoping to see here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing a new pitching coach as well. Doug Bockler is going to join the staff. That's going to be interesting. All right, Eric, I know you're going to still be with us here. Let's bring in some of the other guys as well. Let's bring in Mike Keedy. Let's bring in Kyle Mall as well. And let's start getting to some of these questions. The fans have asked a lot of questions. There's a lot to unpack here. Uh, Mike, I'm going to start with you. Uh, a lot of talk about the the attendance that will be for the Toledo Monahans to start the season. Can you explain to the folks how the 1,500 people will be dispersed in the stadium. Yeah, sure. Um, we, we really have two sources of uh, uh, groups that are, are making the rules, basically. Uh, major League Baseball, it's going to be the same rules that every Major League Baseball facility and Minor League Baseball facility uh, and the state of Ohio, of course. Uh, so Kyle and his team are working on uh, setting people up in, in pods of up to six people 
and we have to make sure that there is a six foot radius around uh, each group. And we're asking people to sit with uh, members of their own household or trusted individuals. And uh, this is an example of what a seating chart will look like. It's not firm, uh, but this is the kind of work we've been doing to go through each section, every single seat. Uh, Kyle and I have been out with measuring tape for hours, um, trying to establish a seating chart and make sure that uh, we can abide by the rules and, and do it the right way. And that was an interesting look there as well on that graphic, just kind of how uh, the seating will go, uh, Mike. Uh, Kyle, I, Sally had this question. How is seating going to work? Do we get our usual seats? That's a good question, Matt, and it's a common question. And, and the, the answer to it is it, it's unlikely. Uh, based upon the chart that Mike was just showing and walking everybody through, in order to uh, get as many of our fans in the in the stadium, as many of our ticket holders and the folks we want to be able to enjoy Mud Hens baseball, we are going to have to distance everyone. So because of that, it displaces everyone. Um, we think this is going to be temporary. We're taking a month-to-month -month approach on this, and we really just want to make sure that we're doing right by everybody, keeping everybody safe. And again, one of those temporary adjustments for this year and looking forward to getting everyone back to their normal seats in the future. Yeah, and that that kind of goes into this, uh, the phase plan here. Would you describe that a little bit for us? Yeah, absolutely. So our season ticket members, or the flock as we like to call them, have been receiving communication about our phases, uh, the different phases that we'll be rolling out the season. One thing that we knew was, and we've been discussing this with multiple other minor league baseball teams, major league baseball teams, NFL teams that have played, minor league hockey teams that have played, and the one thing we were certain of is we wanted to phase this out. We want to make sure that we are taking a slow approach to it. We have some uh, colleagues in other leagues that have given every single uh, ticket out already for the rest of the season. We feel that it's best for our fans if we can actually take a slower approach and do month to month so that as information changes, we can adjust with it. Uh, as Mike had said, we've actually been – uh, looking at the ballpark and many different angles. So we want to be able to use that and make sure we get as many folks in as we can. Uh, that's that's very interesting. Kyle, appreciate that. Uh, Mike, I think uh, this is a great question from Arlene. What are the safety protocols going to be for attending a game right, right out of the gate? That's a great question. And it's something that um, you're going to probably hear a lot from us over the next six weeks, just because you know, we want to be sure that we are, are very clear and we want to be sure that uh, we're straight with everybody on what to expect. Because once we get beyond that, it's Mud Hens baseball and it's fun. And that's what that's what we aim to do. Um, you know, as I said earlier, there's the same set of rules at all Major League Baseball facilities and all Minor League Baseball facilities, no matter what state you're in. Um, and then there's a set of rules that we have to uh, that we have to meet that is set by the state of Ohio right now for out opening outdoor venues. Um, it really comes down to physical distancing, as we just described. When you come to the ballpark, you can anticipate uh, that you're going to have a, a seat location that's designated for you, and there will be nobody seated next to you. You can anticipate that there's going to be directional signage on the concourse. Uh, at the lines, at the concession stands, to keep people distanced and, and walking on a particular path. Um, and most importantly, uh, it will be mandatory to wear masks to get into uh, Fifth Third Field. And those masks must be worn by everybody ages two and over uh, at all times, unless you are actively eating and drinking at your designated seating location. Very similar to what you see at other venues, restaurants, uh, uh, that will be the case when we open up the ballpark this spring. There you go. Good information, Mike. Uh, Erica, I think this one should probably head your way here. Uh, with the governor, it's possible he may be. There's been a rumor that he may uh, open it up to 30% of capacity. How would that uh, change things for the Mudhead fans? Well, uh, you know, I, I, that has started to, there's been some speculation around that and, and some things coming out. The way it'll change is right now, we're focused on what we're able to do, the, the 1500 number and putting our plan in place to be able to safely entertain 
1,500 people at Fifth Third Field on April 6th. Uh, once, you know, and, and the hope has been that that number will increase, obviously, and, and not knowing whether that timeline was gonna be before opening day or not until July, we've, we've gone with just the bits and pieces of knowledge that, that, that we've known at this point. With some of the discussion happening that that number might be increasing even sooner than we thought, that would be excellent, obviously. Um, and we will adjust the plans accordingly. I think the things I'd share now just about that is that there's still a plan in place and a process in place that we need to follow no matter when that increased capacity is announced. Uh, we, we've been on a couple calls with the governor recently, um, you know, minor leagues and major league baseball in Ohio, uh, getting that ability to get more fans in is everybody's goal. Uh, but there is still a safety plan and a protocol plan that we have to submit even once that increased capacity is announced to have the major league baseball and the state of Ohio sign off on that. Um, and and it, it, you know, an increased number is outstanding for many reasons. It's still not going to change the things we've started talking about on this call, the, the social distancing, all, all the things that we are gonna have to experience this year will be in place no matter what that number is able to go up over the course of the year. So the sooner the better that we can, we can get that number to 30% so we can take the next steps in the process to get that approved and then adjust our plans accordingly. And then hopefully the way things are going, even later in the summer, that number will continue to grow. And we wanna be flexible and going back to Kyle's point from a couple minutes ago, uh, all the plans that we're putting out now, we, we vetted, we, we threw a lot of things out there to see what we thought would give us the best chance for success and be the best experience for our fans. And uh, we, we have not taken that lightly. It's, it's been a matter of trying things, vetting things, comparing to what other teams in our, doing, or, uh, in our league and in the minor leagues are doing. And so it's the same sort of thing as that attendance percent growth. All right, thank you, Eric. Uh, Kyle, this one has been asked a lot of, by the flock members. We love our flock members. Uh, will, there be, will there be a flock member ticket pickup? Unfortunately, this year we will not have the flock, the traditional flock member uh, ticket pickup. We will be into digital ticketing this year. So as we have in the past where we've sent out all of our tickets to everyone, this year will be a little different. It's all going to be digital tickets in our new ticketing system of tickets.com. You will get information on this. We have tons of videos that our box office manager, Jenny Hill, has put together done a nice job uh, explaining everything. Great tutorials there. Basically, the, the really fast version of that is you will get an online account. And at any point in time, if you can't make your game or if you want to share your tickets with a friend, it's as easy as knowing their email and sending the tickets to them. If you have a smartphone, you'll be able to scan that right away into the gates. Easy. And if you don't, you can always print that at home and then bring that in and we'll be able to uh, to get you into the ballpark. But so we will, we will be uh, taking a year off from the, the flock member pickup party. It, it pains us to do that. We love seeing everybody. It's one of my favorite events to chat with everyone, but uh, we do believe it's in the best interest to go with our digital ticketing contactless ticketing model for the season. And Kyle, I mean, it seems like it's a very easy process there, the way you explained it. Very easy, very, very easy. So that, that's cool. I, I'm looking forward to that. I think, Mike, this next question, uh, this one we've gotten a lot of already. I'll, I'll give credit to Lori here, but what will the concession stands? Hey, what are they going to look like this year when the fans do get into the ballpark? Well, I mean, this is an important question, Mike. We need the answer to this question. This is really important. Mike, my, my family comes to the game to get hot dogs. I totally understand this. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you know, we, we uh, like everything else, this is something we're working really hard on to make sure we do it right. Um, I think a lot of the ballpark favorites that you're used to getting when you come to Mud Hens games are going to be available to you. Uh, what I can tell you is we have to uh, we have to focus on things that we can do um, uh, quickly to keep the lines moving. Uh, they might be at least to start the season there might be less items available than what we normally would have uh, during a, a regular operating season just for that reason so that we can prepare it quicker. 
uh, package it quicker and serve it quicker um, just for uh, fan safety and, and ease of service. Um, but overall, the concession stands, the, the main concourse concession stands that people enjoy uh, will be open uh, throughout the whole ballpark. And other than maybe a few less items, uh, it'll look uh, it'll look a lot of the same than what people are used to seeing. Mike, I'm going to stick with you for just a second here because we got this question earlier. I want to get to it, though, because it's important as well. The fact that I love calling the games. We get to the seventh inning. We start hearing music fire up over at Hensville Park. What are, are we going to see anything of that nature this year? Well, I hope we do. I, I think uh, the conversation right now is that uh, we're, we're doing everything we can and focus solely on getting the ballpark open for the first time. And I think you guys said almost 600 days. Uh, and that, that right now is everybody's focus. And once we do that successfully, I think that gives us the opportunity to turn our attention to other parts of the operation and, and start working on getting those reopened again too. But I, I would go as far as to say, you could probably expect that there would be some kind of uh, activity this summer uh, over in Hensville Park at some point. Uh, looking forward to that, Mike. Uh, that's a great answer there. And thanks for answering the food question as well. Very important uh, when we're talking about baseball games in downtown Toledo. Uh, Kyle, I think this would be an interesting one for you. David asked, I know you're trying to figure out details as the info and directives are issued, but what can I expect from my ticket package that I purchased for the 2020 season? Absolutely. And that that is one of the top things that the our staff is working on right now. So it, if you did uh, purchase your 2020 game plan, you got messaging from us all last summer, some follow-up information about that rolling over to this year. And we thank you for that. I, I want to take the moment to say that right now too, that that, it, that means everything to us, the support that the community shown, that our ticket holders have shown has been tremendous. Uh, from the perspective of what happens to that, that rolls into this year. Uh, that goes back to the, the four phases that we were talking about. If you're a flock member, you've gotten emails from us about the uh, form for the first two phases, opening days and the, the first week, the second week of April, I'm sorry, to fill those out. The, the big thing that we would ask is that uh, regardless of, of your plan, that you would fill that out. Um, if you have a full season plan, we'd like you to go ahead and log into that site and indicate your, your options. If you have an 18 okay. game Saturday plan, we would also like you to go in there and fill that out here for April. That's gonna help us help you. Yeah, see that's, uh, we're seeing that question come through as well. I have an 18 game Saturday mm -hmm. package. You know, what What do I do? Can I still use those on all the Saturday? Yeah, I mean, head into that form, fill out what you'd like to see for April. If you choose to use a couple games, you'll have 16 games remaining and so on and so forth with your plans. As we move into the next phases, we'll have more information about those specifics in the plans where our fans have gotten used to the Saturday plan, the Friday plan, exactly what that would look like. We, we are taking that phase by phase as well. Uh, but the basic way to look at that is if you have an 18 game plan, you'd like to use some of those games up front, go ahead and, and select that and we'll make the adjustment, make sure everybody is uh, up to date on what they have remaining here for the season. And tickets uh, are interesting. Question. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kyle. Oh, sorry, Matt. I was just going to add too. Tickets are, are are held. We know our flock members are our top priority. Uh, we are seating flock season ticket members first. That is our number one thing that we want to take care of. So as you're renewing this year, as you're talking to anyone on our staff, just know we are always looking at giving first priority in every phase to our flock members. All right, let's keep these questions going. We're getting a lot of them. Thanks again for tuning in here on Facebook Live. Uh, Mike, this is probably a good question for you. Uh, Patrick wants to know, will kids be able to run the bases this year? Well, that, yeah, that is a good question. That's a big part of what we do. Um, I think right now I'd have to say that uh, I don't know yet because as Eric mentioned at the very beginning, you know, we're still learning some of the things uh, that Major League Baseball is going to require of all of its uh, member teams. And a lot of that has to do with what can happen on the field. Um, and we're going to ask some questions and we're going to understand that a little bit more. Um, if we can't do kids run the bases or something like that at the beginning of the year, we're going to come up with some kind of fun alternative. Because that's if anybody can 
make the situation fun, it's minor league baseball. And we're going to find ways to, to do that. Um, but I, I, that, that said, if we could have kids run the bases this year, it, and uh, I hope that that's the easy answer. No, that's, I, a, that's a good answer. I, Go ahead, Eric. I, I just add there, I mean, Mike, Mike hit the nail on the head. You know, there, there is that information that we're still waiting upon. Last year, just when we had the, the taxi squad here, there was a, a hundred page manual for major league baseball about the safety protocols we had to have in place for the people that were here. And we weren't even allowed to have fans in at that point. So in major league baseball's quick effort to get spring training going, which everybody knows started last week, one of the pieces of information we are still uh, waiting on and we'll be receiving at any time is what we can and are able to do from that sort of uh, question and, and what sort of activities that fans are accustomed to are we going to be able to do and which ones like Mike mentioned might need to be modified for 2021 until we're able to get back to what we all know. And Eric, there's a lot of scenarios that still could change, right? This is a, everything's kind of, you know, it's, we got a lot, you said it earlier, there's a lot of answers, but there's still a lot of questions, right? There is, there is. And, you know, one of the things that we're, you know, we're trying to stress is this year will look different. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This year will look different compared to what 2019 and every year before that looked like. The approach we're taking is 2021 and whatever form it's in is a positive compared to what wasn't able to happen last year. Um, but, you know, the fan experience, uh, we're going to try and replicate to the best of our ability based upon what protocols are in place. But, but things are going to look different when, when you have a reduced capacity and you have safety protocols in place that before last year, no one really had to deal with. It, it, it will look different, but we're, we're on that path back. And, um, you know, we, we'll, we will do things that we're able to do and be creative where we can be creative and, uh, you know, get back to what everybody knows and, and expects from us. All right, Mike, uh, getting a lot of questions here, uh, talking about applying for work, internships with the Mud Hens, and things that are, we're going to need to uh, hit at some point over the course of the summer. Do you want to handle that? Yeah. Um, obviously, like Eric mentioned at the beginning, this is all happening very quickly. So we are we are putting our, our game day team together. Um, a lot of people um, were coming back from prior years. Um, but I do know that there will be some job postings soon for food and beverage jobs here at the ballpark. Uh, we will be releasing that information soon. Uh, if you had applied for the 2020 season, we would ask you to reapply for the 2021 season. Uh, but stay tuned because there will be some more job information released very, very soon. All right, uh, Kyle, I, we're getting questions as well about, uh, you know, flock uh, members. They haven't received an email. Uh, can you touch on that? Yeah. Uh, if, number one, if you haven't received an email, I would always recommend the, the, the spam filter. So check that. If that doesn't work, uh, give us a call and we'll make sure that we have your email up to date. We'll make sure that uh, we're getting you the information. And additionally, we're going to be sending out uh, links to this video again tomorrow and another reminder about the uh, the form. And then check if your text alerts do. We have enabled that capability recently to send forms to you as well. And interesting, uh, you know, I've had this question asked to me uh, by a few people and uh, just uh, just an out and about is the fact, will there be any tickets available for the general public? people that aren't flock members kyle i don't know if that's uh, where you want to go with that yeah i can touch on that uh it, eric i'm sure you'll have some comments on it as well uh certainly our, our priority is our flock members we do have another priority group of folks that had purchased single game tickets from last season that we want to make sure that we are giving their opportunities as well and as far as having single game tickets our goal is to to get to that place. Our goal is to be able to get more fans inside the building. Uh, stay tuned for more information on that. I strongly encourage you to sign up for the text alerts on mudhens.com, sign up for the single game alerts on mudhens.com. As soon as we have that information that we can make available, we will. 
And those will be the folks that we hit first. And I, I just add there, um, you know, when Kyle mentioned a little while ago from the, the season ticket holder perspective, you know, the forms that we're asking for to be completed, that sort of information helps us be able to answer questions about the inventory and, and how many tickets, if any, would be available for single game. Uh, the season ticket holders, as we've mentioned, come first at the beginning of the line. And we envision that there would be a very limited number when 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 we're going through all this and you talk about ticket scarcity and, and in a normal year uh, we, we sell about 550,000 tickets and if we were truly limited to 1500 all year that's about 105,000 tickets there, there's an inventory piece that we're we're still trying to master but knowing how the priority has to priority order has to work so uh, we envision there being single game tickets available. Uh, what quantity per game, or is it going to be the same quantity every game? It, it's too early to determine that, but we will we will have some news regarding that in you know the the first half of March for sure. All right, uh, another one for you here, uh, uh, Kyle. Uh, what if you're a season? You have a season ticket package. Decide you're not comfortable attending. At this point, what happens to your ticket? Absolutely, great question. A uh, question we do get a lot, which is another one of the reasons that we planned out the phases. So number one, definitely head into the phases and let us know that, uh, indicate that, that you would like to pause your membership. Uh, as we, we talked about at the beginning, if it is a year long situation, I'd strongly encourage you to call your, your sales rep, give me a call, give one of us a call, we can take care of you and make sure that we're rolling you over into next season and maintaining your, your season ticket holder status, your seats. Uh, we also do have the option each time you go into the phase for opening days for April, you'll be able to indicate that you'd like to not take those date, those games, and we would roll over your credit for you. Okay. That kind of answers that one as well. If you have, if you decide to take your 2021 tickets, move them, you could move them to 2022. Is that correct? Is that where you were kind of going there, Kyle? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Kyle. Sorry, you're a little trapped. You keep going to repeat that one, Matt. Yeah, I was just going to say uh, if so, basically what you were saying there is if you wanted to, you could move your 2021 if you don't feel comfortable, you could possibly go to 2022 if you want. Absolutely. Yeah, we want to make sure that everyone has their best options available to them. We want to do right by every single one of our fans. And if doing right by you is making sure that you stay comfortable, that's important to us. So give us a call. Let us know if that's the case for you. Give us an email and we'll make sure we take care of that. Mike, another fun one that I've got to go to you for here. We talked about the food, very important. You know, one of the things we're always famous for is the yearly giveaways during the course of the season. Will we see any of that this year? Yeah, I mean, that's that's another staple of minor league, uh, minor league baseball. Uh, the good thing, one of the uh, good things of uh, – uh, the timing last year, we, we actually were able to order some giveaways from uh, 2020. So we've been anxiously waiting uh, to get some of this stuff out. Uh, we've got a, a closet full of things downstairs um, to, to give out this 2021 season. We haven't announced anything yet. Uh, I, I mentioned it earlier, but right now I think the focus just being on getting over the hump of getting the ballpark open safely and, and taking care of all of our season ticket holders and uh, ticket holders first. And then I think we look forward to rolling out some of that fun information as well. So there will be some, some giveaways coming up. And a follow up to that, Mike, uh, it kind of ties into that at the swamp shop. Will that be open during games? Yes, definitely. Uh, swamp shop will be open. Uh, we've remained open this whole time. Uh, we just haven't opened in store. Uh, except for around the holidays, uh, but but uh, that's another that's another place that we want to thank the community and thank everybody because uh, the amount of support we've seen just through online orders at the store this entire time has uh, has really been uh, nice to see and and we we do appreciate that 
Uh, but the swap shop will be open for games, um, and we do have uh, safety measures in place there to, to show uh, distancing, and you'll see plexiglass barriers. You'll see all the things that you have become accustomed to seeing when you're going out in retail establishments uh, will be ready for you at the swap shop. Kyle, uh, another question for you. Will you hold my seat for 2022? Yeah, uh, if, if you are not comfortable coming out to the stadium this season, and we totally understand both scenarios, uh, we would hold your location for you. Yeah, if we're rolling that into next season, we would definitely hold on to that location. And then an interesting one, Kelly asks, uh, I'm a full season flock member. Will I be able to attend all the games? Great question, Matt. That, that remains to be seen. Uh, that is one of those situations where we really need everyone to fill out that form that we've referenced a few times here uh, this evening. Once we have a little bit more information, we'll be able to answer those questions. But it's certainly, certainly possible that we would be in a situation where we may have to, uh, we may not be able to uh, fulfill that on every single game. Yeah, some great questions. We've we've been inundated with a lot of very good ones for sure. Of course, uh, there's so many things that uh, will still come to light and be uh, answered here as we go forward. Uh, Eric, I, I want to go back to you on just the start of this season uh, when we get to April and you know seeing the six game series and that first series against Omaha is going to be a special one. It is. It is, and you know I I've been asked a few times, uh, you know we shared when we re released the schedule that we were treating the opening homestand, the six games against Omaha as opening days. Why, why are you doing that? Well, you know, we, we thought after what happened or didn't happen last year, uh, the support that we received and, you know, basing it on a, a 1500 capacity when we can draw 12 to 13,000 on any opening day in a traditional year, um, that, that we wanted to do opening days for that entire first homestand and, and promote the, uh, the return of Mud Hens baseball and with the reduced capacity, even w w you know at 1,500 for six games to make up that entire first homestand, we're still not even able to get to what we would draw on the one single opening day that everybody's accustomed to. So we, we thought, what, what a better way to celebrate the start of a season coming off a missed year is to have just a, a celebration for that entire first six game homestand. And, and, and that's the story behind opening days. And, and knowing that there's gonna be a lot of people that missed baseball last year, missed the Mud Hens last year, missed the traditions that they do at the ballpark last year. So let's, let's not just focus on one, although the one is obviously significant, but let's look at that first week as a celebration of us being back. And that kind of leads into one of the questions that we did pick up here. You know, we had opening day tickets for last year, 2020. Can we use them for opening day 2021? My Eric just told you, we've got six opening days coming. Mm -hmm. Kyle, you want to take that one? Definitely. Uh, if you did purchase opening day tickets for last year, and, and there were quite a few of you who did, and we thank you for that. Uh, we took the same approach we did with our flock members to – offer you an opportunity to pick your choice of the first six games there. So you should have received an email. Again, if you have not received that email, please check different uh, spam filters. If you still don't find that, shoot us an email at tickets at mudhens.com and we will follow up with you and make sure that you get that form and opportunity to tell us your preferences between our six uh, awesome opening days. And you can attend multiple opening days, right? That's the hope that we'll be able to have more than uh, that. There's an opportunity to come to more than one of our opening days. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Mudhens.com uh, for all the information there. And boy, we've had so many great questions tonight. The fans are ready. I think guys, I think they're ready for baseball. I know I am. I know you guys are. We need to get to some baseball. I think first and foremost, we need to get the team out there and get this thing going again. Cause I know we were pretty fired up for what should have been a pretty good team last year, and I think we'll be in that same boat this year, at least looking at it uh, from the prospect side of things. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, Eric. I know you're looking forward to it and getting really ready to go uh, for this season. Absolutely. You know, we, we, we've touched upon a lot of things here tonight. Just the fact that we're, we're back and able to share and talk 
about these questions, even though there, there's quite a few differences than what people are accustomed to. We're back. You, you talk about the the on-field product. You know, one one of the disappointments for me, and, and when you look back at last year, there, there's so many disappointing things, obviously. But when you looked at the schedule we had, uh, the the team we were supposed to have, the new coaching staff, the way sales were shaping up prior to the start of the season. And, and then what I really ended up torturing myself with is every night you'd look at the calendar last year and like, oh, we'd have a game tonight. What do you know? It's 80 degrees and sunny. The, the weather ended up being so fantastic. So it was like the proverbial knife getting twisted in the back constantly. But knowing that, uh, you know, we would have had a bunch of prospects. There, there were probably a couple of those guys who we would have had that might not make their way here this year because they're going to be uh, 60 miles north of here. But we should still have a core, strong group of guys. The Tigers have done a great job replenishing that system. It's not a quick fix, but you know we're excited to see you know over the next month or so what what the roster shapes up as based upon how the guys are doing down in spring training. Yeah, certainly fired up to see everything going in spring training right now and uh, getting ready to go for baseball. It's certainly great. Uh, Eric, Mike, Kyle, thank you so much uh, for taking the time out this evening. Thanks to all our great fans uh, for tuning in on uh, Facebook Live. Flock uh, members, there'll be an email heading your way tomorrow, right, Kyle? You're going to be uh, uh, in hitting their inboxes tomorrow, so take a look out for that. And, of course, we're getting ready for baseball. April 6th is opening day against the Omaha Storm Chasers, keep an eye out on mudhens.com for the latest information. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, let's get ready for baseball, and we'll look forward to seeing the fans pretty soon. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight, everyone.